Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another comic book reading. We are doing a reading for today. Live stream reading of Superman number 37 from 1952. Okay. And this is the oldest Superman comic in my collection. One of the old, oldest comic books in my collection. I I believe I do have some comics in the early 1940s, maybe late 1930s. Uh, none, nothing related to Superman or action comics. So this is the oldest sort of DC superhero comic book that I have in my collection. And I picked this up recently in the last few years. And um, the person I picked it up from graded this thing at 5, 5.5. 5. Uh, 5. So uh, very good, fine fine minus and uh i would tend to agree with them i did flip through this when i first bought it so uh it's a nice book and i'm glad we're reading it because i'm actually thinking about sending us to be graded but aside from that little quick little lowdown let's take a look at the cover and what i want to do actually i'm going to take this off out of the mylar and just let you know who some of the creators are that have worked on this take this out now this is DC comics right obviously and uh, the cover for this is pencils is by Wayne boring and the inks is by George Russo's okay and this character here is the prankster I believe I don't know the prankster i think this is going to be the first time i'm ever reading a story about the prankster and i really don't even know how uh, what the oldest appearance of the prankster is it looks like a badass he puts tnt in a box what superman's amazing x-ray vision reveals right look at that Superman's not happy about that, but he does have a grin, right? A gift for me? No thanks, prankster. You keep it. Now, I don't know if this is the first appearance of the prankster, but I'm assuming it should be the first appearance of the prankster. And the other people that have worked on this are Alvin Schwartz, Ed Dobrot Dobrotka, okay? George Rosos, as I said, he's done a lot of inking on this. Uh, Dan Carmen. Uh, Stan K, Whitney Ellsworth, Sam Citron. So I wrote all these names down, and uh, Jerry Siegel is supposed to work worked on this too. And what I found out is weird. I'm not 100 sure on this, but it says here everything that I found out was Alvin Schwartz was the artist for the first story and Don. Uh, Carmen was the artist for the second story and whatnot, but they were supposed to be signed as Jerry C uh, Siegel and Joe Schuster, the creators of Superman. So, what I'm gathering is Alvin Schwartz was probably the ghost uh, artist for this um, or writer for this, and then just signed it as Jerry Siegel uh, or Joe Schuster, right? it's interesting um i'd love to l sort of dig down into the golden age of comics a little bit more to uh let's <laughs> mural to dig down into the history but i think that's going to require reading one two three or five five books or something on the subject and this is a nice great copy now we're not going to flip through this thing uh, because we're just going to read the stories but let's look at the back cover as well lighter moments with fresh everyday batteries by war bonds huh check that out ever ready not every day ever ready wow ever ready was 
around back then with batteries. Ever ready ignition, dry cell. Look at the battery on that thing, eh? Which one of you guys is cutie pie? Ha uh ha. -huh. Who's cutie pie? Maybe the guy with the red hat. Ever ready. What does that say? Let's take a look. I'm having a hard time focusing. There we go. Let's get the jab. Let's get the jab and get it over. What? Ready. Number six. Dry cell continues to provide uh, dependable power for the vital field telephone equipment of our armed forces. But you'll be glad to know they are available in increasing quantities for civilian use fresh full powered long lived as always ask for them at your dealers now the registered trademark ever ready and ignition uh, distinguished products of national carbon company incorporated cool and this is 1945 just coming out of world war ii eh? very cool i mean seriously the history of this thing is insane insane 52 page magazine right. nice clean artwork right the spine so if we send this for grading let's see what this will come back as right take a look at it and tomorrow we're gonna do some comic book gradings and I'm not a professional grader so we'll pull up the the page where you know from a website where they say what should be graded as what and we'll see what we can do about it so gang let's go through this what is this thing up here b is for beaver who chews trees and bark but when he's real chewy he looks for this mark a superman publication batman batman it's batman ad on the cover of batman for example it's your guarantee of the best of any comic magazine batman it's this seal that they're talking about right there a superman publication dc comics right and we have that thing here as well right there we go they're talking about this guy right there a superman publication november december 10 cents so this is spanning two months right that's why when we did the math we should double what it's going back as right so six years right if it's coming once every coming out once every two months superman comics i didn't realize that so 36 divided by 12 is three multiplied by two that's six and this is 1945 so superman comics came out in 1939 very cool very cool let's read this as well editorial advertise uh, advisory board superman dc comic magazine dr loretta bender associate professor of psychiatry 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 school of medicine new york uh, wow university pearl s buck author the good earth the promise etc winner 1938 nobel prize president the state and west association association joseph frank consultant on children's reading child study association of america wow best b lane educational director united parents association dr c bowie millican Department of English Literature, New York University. What? They have all these people on their board of directors, advisors. Dr. W. W. B. D. Sons. They probably just paid him a little bit of money to have, be able to put their names on here, right? Professor of Education and Director of Circulation Study, University of Pittsburgh. 
Dr. Robert Thorndike, Department of Educational Psychology, Teachers College, Columbia University. Com. I don't know what com would stand for. Uh, com Jean Tooney, USNR, former world's heavyweight boxing champion, member executive board, New York, New York Boy Scout Foundation. Wow. Commander, I guess. Commander Gene Tooney. Wow. The following magazines all bear the trademark as you your guarantee of the best best in comic reading. Action comics, adventure comics, all funny comics, Batman, Boy Commandos, Buzzy, Detective Comics, Leading Leading Comics, More Fun Comics real screen comics star spangled comics superman world's finest so those are all the publications that dc comics was putting out at that time cool that's super cool let's read the fine print on this superman number 37 november december 1945 published bi-monthly by superman incorporated uh, 430 Lexington Avenue, New York, 17, New York, F.W. Ellsworth editor. Re-entered a second-class matter June 20, 25th, 1940 at the post office at New York, New York, under the act of March 3rd, 1879. Yearly subscription in the U.S., 75 cents, including postage entire contents copyright 1945 by superman inc for advertising rates address richard a, a. felden k and company 420 haha 420 lexicon and avenue new york new york 17 new york except those who have authorized authorized use of their names the stories characters and incidents mentioned in this periodical are entirely imaginary and fictitious and no I identification with actual persons living or dead is intended or should be inferred printed in the USA very cool that's pretty cool I don't think we've seen uh, like a board of directors editorial advisory board like this right and this is pre uh comic code right so they were really trying to make sure their products were g-rated right so gang should we do a reading of superman number 37 let's go through this and there is a uh, there should be four stories in this three main ones and a two pager okay right so let's take a look at this thing it's weird uh, just gonna give you this oh there's the name right there okay let's read through this because the names of the stories here from what I could find online are the first one is the a dangerous dream the second one is pranks for profit and then crime in the art studio and then the rubbish robbers right and the name of the story is right there I thought it was supposed to be up here but it's not so let's take a look at this thing Superman Superman dream cinema now playing illusion in Tibet by Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster. Trust him. The mirror was trippy, super fun. Strange indeed is the stuff of dreams, but stranger still is the perilous reality which brings Superman to the endangered 
dreamer's rescue. But when the man of steel turns his Ill illimitable, illimitable genius to steal, to to sight, it's so difficult to read when the lines are going sideways. Uh, where does it say? Da, 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 da. But when the man of steel turns his Elaine in Ill illimitable genius to psychology in order to restore Johnny Frey's shattered morale, it leads to the unexpected trouble for Clark Kent. Nothing but a climatic clash with crime can then dispel the ex policeman's resentful reaction to the dangerous dream. Is that like Clark Kent in the ticket booth selling tickets? Looks like it. So a Superman selling tickets to his own show. Is this is this the dream sequence? The beginning of the dream sequence? Maybe not. Let's check it out. night extra planet velvet gans gang slips through police net police johnny frey resigns after mob escapes him no reason given for action of former cop hero impossible why should johnny frey resign uh, the force meant everything to him clark thinks or says frey came out of the hospital only two weeks ago after being wounded in a gun battle, well, he took three uh, desperados single-handed, Clark says. Yes, there's no doubt about his courage. He's refused to talk to reporters, but maybe he'll talk to me. We're pretty good friends, Clark says. Well, go see him. There may be a story in it. I'm assuming that's Clark's editor. Boss, that afternoon, it's Clark Kent, Johnny. I'm not talking to the press, press Clark, but come on in. There's Johnny. How about telling an old friend why you resigned, Johnny? I know I can trust you, Clark. Besides, if I don't talk to someone, I'll go crazy. But if you ever blab, Johnny says. He's reading a lot of books. Um, I'm yellow, Clark. Plain yellow. I could have nabbed the Valley Gang, but ever since I was hurt in that gun battle, my nerves become gone. My nerves been gone. That's why I didn't want to force uh, to find out. Ah, oh, he lost his nerve. Now. Now I lie around reading these adventure books to stimulate my courage. In my sleep, I dream. I'm a hero of the stories. Every night I do it. Funny, isn't it? Me, the daring Johnny Frey. I'm sorry, Johnny. Terrible story, Clark says. Is that a picture of himself in the background in a suit? Yeah, looks like it. Afterwards, afterwards, as Clark leaves, what a tragedy! Reading and dreaming, and 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 too proud to tell the world what's happened to him. If only dreams could come true, and why shouldn't they? Yes, why not? Clark's got an idea. With the help of Superman, he says. There he is, reading a book on tibetan travels and half asleep already eyes oh, on the windowsill or outside anyway asleep at last now now let's run through this book and examine the stuff the dreams are made of that's what i was reading the book 
500 pages reading time 10 seconds for Superman hmm it's going to be some job job setting the exact scene and getting the uh, paraphernalia but I think I know where to go he says I've done some pretty big favors for the Metropolis Museum the curator be glad to provide me with what's needed later <laughs> like a superman <laughs> grabbing all the stuff later gracious what a load are you sure you have everything yes and thanks to the museum you've been a great help superman says and this abrupt as it may seem ends the first part of our story what ends the first part of the story it's gonna continue after like a oh so he goes and sets this up look at this look at this so we end here and we black out and here we go here we go but we resume our tale two hours later to find a strange beast howling outside the skin hut somewhere in the mysterious recesses of mountainous Tibet Arr, some animal growling I'm assuming it's supposed to be a wolf while inside the hut roused suddenly from slumber is John Johnny Frey that shriek it was like oh where am I what am I doing here This tent is vaguely familiar, of course. That picture of the interior of the explorer's hut in the book I was reading before I fell asleep. Surely I'm dreaming, but how real it seems. That shriek again. Why, it's just like the book where the author picked up his rifle and went outside. holy smoke the gun is jammed click but it happened like that in the book too dream or no dream I've got to act fast now I remember I'll do what the author did if it fails I'll know I'm not dreaming it worked it worked so far funny it doesn't seem like dreaming at all he just jumps under the wolf next the author used his rifle butt this way to apply additional leverage to the dog's lead so that it, its own momentum carried it over the edge of the cliff oh man he just killed the dog it worked Phew. the most harrowing dream i ever had still i seem to get a kick out of it don't even want to wake up there's superman reading reading the book referencing it well what is all this dream or re reality perhaps a certain familiar figure crouched watchfully behind the nearby boulder can provide the answer Tibet the book says so far he's too confused to be afraid and he's going by his uh, memory of the book believing it's a dream lucky I didn't have the uh, have to interfere that beast might not have followed the script no oh, kidding yes it was superman who set the stage whisked the sleeping johnny off to tibet jammed the rifle and planted the uh, wild dog exactly reproducing the conditions of the book but now what 
the next danger according to the book would be the landslide that oof landslide that oof beats and they're coming this way better investigate beats hoof beats ah hoof beats no sound effects to tell us there's the hoof beats vicious looking lot probably a robber band headed towards the hut too hmm maybe I ought to stop them after all this is one of the guys from the mural inside the in front of the theater right no reason for Johnny's dream to follow the book exactly this real danger should stimulate his courage as well as the one I intended to plant and meanwhile I'll keep watching in case things get too difficult huh. there's uh, Johnny's little hut right. A moment later wow I'm being shot at lucky I fixed my rifle Bam, so there must be fire coming at him this didn't happen in the book and that shot seemed real still I must be dreaming otherwise how did I get here he flies back files his rifle <laughs> fires his rifle that's funny they stopped firing and why are they building fires behind those rocks From his vantage point above, they're building smoke fires and using the wind to force Johnny into the open. Have to do some uh, something, but can't let Johnny see me yet. He's doing fine so far. Uh, there's Johnny right there in the in the smoke, right? And then there's the people right there. What's Superman up to? What's Superman up to? This vegetation should do the trick. Have to work fast though, before that smoke blindsides Johnny and makes him helpless. a job weaving the stuff into a fan is that what he's doing yeah seconds later this ought to make those bandits eat some of their own smoke he made a fan so he's blowing the smoke back out to the bandits while down below cough choke can't stand this much longer cough Ah, oh, the wind is changing and the scoundrels are being choked by their own fire smoke themselves out and here they come Johnny says oh jeez here's to you chum dream or no dream I'm having fun oh my god what the hell smacking the guy okay Johnny you don't have to worry about being yellow after that exhibition so I may as well uh, butt in now here comes Superman prancing Pogodons po Superman prancing Paga Pagodas Pagoda what is that saying Prancing Pagodas Superman. Too bad you fellows have no no nice jails, but maybe from now on you'll stay home and be good. Boom. Wait a minute. Now I'm beginning to get it. You brought me here. You did it. You're behind all this. But why? Johnny says.
can't told me everything thinking I could help you so I made your book dreams come true and you showed uh, your old spunk again you're quite cured of fear now yeah gee I guess I am Johnny says I really did battle that beast didn't I and those robbers too yeah it wasn't it was no dream so I couldn't be yellow anymore could I no Johnny you couldn't now it's time to take you home again Superman says and returning Johnny to his room Superman departs leaving the ex-cop to pass the night in further reflection on his experience but I wonder am I really cured Johnny says or am I kidding myself after all I thought it was a dream how could I have acted if I'd known it was real why I'd have been scared stiff he says of course I've been a chump cured baloney Superman made a fool of me that's all Kent's idea too and after promising not to talk why I ought to knock that guy silly by gosh I think I will too oh he's pissed <laughs> next morning at the planet office Clark the velvet gang's been cornered by the police again the mobs barricaded inside the old construction machine plant only two blocks from here and the cops are waiting outside till dark to push them to rush them I'm on my way chief well if it isn't blabbermouth Kent about time you came out Johnny says Johnny why what do you mean Clark asks <laughs> he's pissed as <laughs> he's chasing him you know what I mean blabbering everything to Superman I may be yellow but I'm still gonna pin your ears back now now Johnny I'm, I'm in a hurry the velvet gas cornered and well so long <laughs> what a guy I'm certain Johnny's his old self again but how to prove it to him hmm the velvet gang maybe I can prove it if I can decoy him there Clark's Clark thinks or says hard to say they're not using any thinking bubbles in this look at look at him go like a scared rabbit but he won't get away from me he'll he'll cover the he'll cover the velvet gang story all right in pieces wow the guy's Johnny's pissed short temper ah oh, there's the police line hey you get back want to get your your head blown off the cops are saying it can't the planet reporter he'll be killed the cop says if I figure these mobsters right they won't try shooting me not if they're clever and they've certainly shown they are okay a visitor What's he gonna do? Commit suicide? Don't shoot, you sap. Can't you see he's alone? We got more use for him uh, than bumping him off. Johnny Frey, what are you doing here? The cops ask. Clark Kent, where is he? He asks. The crazy fool ran into ran smack into the building as if devils were after him. And we can't risk rush rushing the place till dark he'll be a goner sure gosh what did I do I must have scared the poor sap silly his blood's on my hands unless I get him out okay so he's his temper is uh, subdued now. Now he's acting like a friend. Hey, Johnny, come back. The cops are trying to stop Johnny from running in. Stay back, man. 
I'm not risking any lives no matter how much I like Johnny Frey he's not on the force now and if he wants to play hero it's his business we stay here till it's dark Maybe the police chiefs nice mustache is that a mustache But as Johnny plunges into the gangster stronghold, just keep him up. You, you're gonna be waiting right there in the li in line of fire when them coppers charge. That ought to slow him up soon. Slow him up some. Clark, just what I figured they'd do. Oh, check this out. So when they want to do thinking, they're putting it in brackets, right? They're still using the line for speaking after this I'm not sure when they started using uh, the round bubbles to portray characters thinking but as soon as it's in brackets it's a thinking happening very cool very cool just what I figured they do Superman things and Johnny aha only chance I to save him is by pulling a crazy act confuse him Johnny thinks Oh, Johnny Frey alone too we can we can use a hostage like you even better reach copper I'm no copper anymore sap is this guy I'm after well sizzle me he must have been slung nutty he must be slung nutty slung nutty Yeah, like a fox and here's proof uh, Johnny says he's pulling a fast one look out uh, past the uh, let me plug him and then Clark's thinking it worked I knew Johnny tried to save me but now Superman has to make sure Johnny won't get hurt here's uh, contains for uh oh johnny shot him you're too slow rat then there's no sound effects in this interesting i wonder when sound effects got introduced to comics so it's a lead it's a let throwing party you want huh okay let's see how rough the velvet gang can play bam, bam, they're firing blast the guy I can't get him a line on him get a line on him he's hiding behind the machinery look at them scattering like a flock of billiard balls boom he just shot one in the back billiard balls and Clark seems to have gotten away which eases my conscience take cover he thinks he's a one-man army Bam. took one guy down how many of them is there one two three four five maybe six maybe six of them so far anyway oh there's a lot more looks like it okay heave this will put put the cr uh, crusher on him so Johnny's way back here back there take a look there he is so there is how many one two three four five six seven eight nine and two on top of him he's taking on a serious gang but suddenly a mighty ally streaks into the scene of battle superman we're we're hashed uh throw it throw in the towel we're hashed throw in the towel look at this that kind of punch we're gonna take people's heads off superman and he's taking the joint apart the last sh uh, shovel full of riffraff and it'll, it'll all be over look at that and they're tommy guns nice tommy guns 
a pow, someone says. Let's see what John is doing. Seconds later. Sorry I had to bust in on your picnic, Johnny, but I got a tip that the Velvet Gang was making a stand here. Superman says. Lucky thing, too. I couldn't have held out much longer, Johnny says. I'm only here because of that dizzy Clark Kent. I threw a scare into him, so he lost his head and rushed in here. I have to try to save him and you did all right too superman says and superman thinking now now to give the cops outside the all clear signal they slip back and be then slip back and become clark again hmm can't disappear at all right but where did he go I still want to see him, Johnny says. Look at the way Superman just took off his leg. <laughs> That's a funny posture. <laughs> Hello, Chief. Have you seen Clark Kent? Johnny says. Now, 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 now look, Johnny. I still say I was only trying to help you when. So there you are, huh? And Clark's he's coming out of a barrel. Check that out. He was hiding in a barrel. Funny. Shake, pal. Are you an ap I owe you an apology. Getting Superman to help me really worked. Only it took this little uh, fraca fracas fracas fracas. This little fracas you got me into with the Velvet Gang to convince me. Are uh, well, well, Kent says. What a story! What a story, Clark says. And you can also print that I'm rejoining the force. Haha, <laughs> it's welcome. You'll, it's welcome. You'll, you'll be, it's welcome. You'll be Johnny Frey. Listen to the thrilling adventures of Superman on your local mutual station so that was uh what do you call it radio show superman right so superman radio show i guess podcast what's this wheaties oh wow look at this wheaties commercial for wheaties an ad for wheaties wheaties breakfast of champions Look at that. Is Wheaties still around? With that mascot and Wheaties, we couldn't lose a game either. There's a mascot and the players. They look pretty skinny. Oh, this is the opposition team, I guess. Look at that. Should we read this? Let's read this. <laughs> Check this out. Here's what it takes to build a winning breakfast. Milk, fruit, and Wheaties. Famous breakfast of champions. Big flakes of rich whole wheat. Roasted honey brown. Toasted crispy fresh. Flavored just right with sweet malt syrup. That's Wheaties. And that's champion nourishment in mighty delicious form. Put in your... Put in your bid for lots of milk, fruit, and Wheaties breakfast of champions. Start eating like a real champion. Start starting tomorrow morning. What does that say? Wheaties and bre uh, breakfast of champions are registered trademarks or General Mills Incorporated. Hmm. And here's a here's a caveat, right? They always say Wheaties breakfast of champions with milk and fruit with milk and fruit you got to get your fruit in there that's the minerals that's the that's what you need 
And here's the prankster. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. This is the second story. Let's take a look. Superman. Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster. The joke is on you. Always prankster. Look at the smile on this guy. <laughs> He's going after the money. Let's read the little intro to this. Have you a practical joker in your home? In his, is his, if his sense of humor is honest and he can laugh at himself when, when the tables are turned, well, well and good. But if he even faintly resembles that mocking mount, mount gang, mount, mount bank of mischief, the one and only prankster steady the story of just that begin with laughter and end in wailing perhaps you can borrow some of the tactics of superman as he invents spectacular surprises to beat the clowning crime king at his own game pranks for profits that was a mouthful what has he got in there? Money, jewels, coin, bills, pearls. Let's read this. There are many odd stories to be to be called from a great city like Metropolis. For example, Lois Lane's latest. Nice feature yarn you've written about some of our more prominent practical jokers, Lois. I've been keeping notes on them for months, Clark, and I've found all all kinds. Writing for the Daily Mail, I believe. No. The joke of some of them are pretty rough. For instance, a Alvin A. Alvin Arnold's. You say you want a race, Smith? And you've been here 20 years? Sit down. Thank you, Mr. Arnold, he says. You can have a $5 race, Smith, after you've had a letdown in my new trick chair. Ha uh ha, -huh. ho ho, help. So he puts him on a prank chair and falls down. <laughs> Some, like Brewster Lynn, the society's playboy, will gladly take you to lunch, but I doubt if you'd enjoy it. Achoo! Whew, smoke coming out of everywhere. Ha <laughs> ha, I switched salt, uh, salt cellars. I switched salt cell cellars. That one's filled with sneeze powder. Oh, what? <laughs> what an eel. And yet another Dexter dreams for, for example, do, do the world a service by taking the conceit out of people. Yes, indeed. I bagged these specimens in the heart of darkness, darkest Africa, at tremendous personal risk. You don't say, he says. Exhibit number 13, wild boar stuffed with self-conceit. Hmm. Okay, the golden age jokes. <laughs> You're partial to Baxter Beams because he's rushing you and throwing a big party to celebrate your birthday, Clark says. Is that so, Lois Lane replies. Why not spend less time worrying about me 
and more getting a story on Superman's hunt for the most dangerous of all practical jokers the most dangerous of all practical jokers that description fits only one person the prankster haha -ha, the prankster laughs how nice of Lois Lane to suggest a new racket for me now that I've gone a w o l from the sheltering walls of state prison uh, his escape from prison so it is that a alvin arnold receives a visit from an old odd looking little man p r angster professor of practical jokes or so your cart says have a chair the guy says no thanks that's collapsing chair gag had whiskers before i did <laughs> But I understand that you're giving a big dinner tonight. If you care to have me arrange a little prank that would be the talk of the town for months. Go on, you interest me, he says. The little guy sitting on his desks. Evening and evening and wealthy and fashionable guests gather at the Arnold penthouse i can think of assignments i'd like better than covering this party clark thinks in the background coming in right better shut your eyes the brilliance of the diamonds is blinding lois says look at all the jewelry everything's shining anyway the food looks good remember arnold's reputation and don't be surprised if if you find a frog in the soup <laughs> serious spread in an alcove a weird figure watches gleefully the pranksters thinking Arnold thinks I'm using only a mild current to uh, startle them and none of them none of none of it not at all on him what a surprise he'll get I want to shock everyone <laughs> suddenly the hum of high tension electric electricity fills the air and Arnold and all but one of his guests are literally paralyzed in their chairs oh clark's thinking what electricity and too much of it to be funny it's knocked everybody out zapping everyone including the guy who's throwing a party the prank the rich fat cat right the only one unaffected by the current clark witnesses the start of one of the strangest robberies of all time ha 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 this will go down in history as one of my most successful jests that's the prankster superman thinks or i'm not superman i'll pretend to fall under the table She's unconscious and won't see what's happening. He's looking at the uh, Lois Lane, right? And the sooner I get her and the others away from the that voltage, the better. Let them fall. After that jolt they've had, they won't come to for an hour. Now to turn myself into Superman, Clark said, thinking. darting with the speed of a bullet superman breaks the flow of current 
and put a stop to all these all this nonsense uh oh quite a card aren't you prankster superman says superman oh no he's dropping all his jewelry he's collected oh, he's jumping out the window trying to escape superman <laughs> frankly i half expected you uh step outside and let me show you something better make it good prankster says oh the next instant even the iron nerves of the man of tomorrow are jolted momentarily a friend of yours i believe oh he's got lois lane lois how did she get out there look at that what's he holding is he holding it that's messing with Lois Lane is gonna seriously piss off Superman oh my god he let her on fire <gasps> what a nasty dude look at that a burst of flame and a slim figure plummets towards the street far below wow that's the rottenest stunt you've pulled yet and you'll spend the rest of your life being sorry for it perhaps you'd better forget about me me and take care of her oh look at that my god what the hell down plunges superman in a in a screaming dive <laughs> look at him jump i should have kept an eye on her if only i'm in time oh no She must be terribly burnt, perhaps killed. And then, as he smooths, uh, smothers the flames, he finds himself the victim of what a more diabolical joke, huh? Only a wax dummy, but it was a rotten trick, just the same. Oh, I'm so glad he didn't light Lois Lane on fire. So it was a Lois Lane dummy, wax dummy meanwhile ha 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 nearest getaway i ever planned and superman will sure be burnt up about it even if lois lane isn't serious joke oh, he's going after the next guy the following day in the home of dexter beams so you're ajax wild an animal trainer what can you do for me Look at his mustache now. Knowing how you dislike that phony big game hunter, uh, Char Charmer's Lay, I thought that tonight at your birthday party for Mrs. Lane. Thought that tonight at your birthday party for Mrs. Lane. Ah, oh, he's telling the plans. Let's see what it is. Speaking of birthday parties, here's Clark a little later shopping for a present for lois jewelry 37 haha -ha. this is superman number 37 right and there's 37 right there right. superman 37 cool easter egg easter egg sort of not really superman's thinking i can't afford as expensive a present as beams will probably buy but she ought to like one of those uh compacts let's check this out and by an odd coincidence the disguised prankster is about to follow suit pranksters thinking there's clark kent who has uh, written so many uncomplimentary things about me since he's undoubtedly buying a present for the bothersome Lois uh, from the bothersome lame girl perhaps I should do so too and get even with both prankster says or thinks right. that night another gay crowd gathers this time in the beams town house in the beams town house 
are these the presents for mrs lane i'll just put mine with the others wow louis lane is having a huge birthday party prankster's thinking here's my chance to switch the packages oh what's he gonna do may i have the next dance miss lane i asked her first oh she's surrounded by men clark's in the background thinking i probably won't even get within hailing distance of her as usual charmers lane is busy telling heroic stories about himself and as the three tigers leaped i drew my hunting knife oh the other guy's yawning knowing that it's all just lies he always hunts from a tower with the natives driving the game past within uh, easy range watch him show watch watch me show him off that should be interesting clark says you've all heard about lay's prowess. now if you'll step into the next room i'll show you the big game of bag you a big game hunter preposterous the guy says my trophy room ladies and gentlemen interesting if only you had some trophies the lay person I don't stuff them I bring them back alive and in cage and in case you're thinking of leaving lay the door you came in uh, came in by is locked it's got tiger lion or polar bear a lion a bear a jaguar jaguar the man is insane lion a bear and a jaguar okay i guess that's a jaguar oh clark i'm afraid lois lane says so am i but i'm glad to note that you haven't forgotten me entirely <laughs> why don't you do something heroic lay what the guy's insane it may be a joke but i don't feel like laughing Clark says help police oh look at this roar everybody's hiding on their tables a moment later Ajax Wild if you're an animal trainer and these are feeble old circus animals why are the why all the protection <laughs> that's his protection from the from the animals <laughs> lady well, it looks like something that's going on right now with plastic coating around it because my friend uh, the laugh is on you these are really wild beasts man killers everyone what cars like prankster you are climbing bookshelves however if you all toss your valuables down to me I'll leave you this uh, high-powered rifle. It'll give you a chance. What a fool I've been, the guy says. A shower of jewels and well-filled wallets rain down on a grinning villain. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You're very kind, he says. Oh, Clark, can't you do something? Me? clark asks and then he's thinking if only i could switch to superman without giving away the secret of my identity but the grim jest is not yet ended and now to show you my appreciation let my presence a present present you with a beautiful specimen of the rhinosaurus family he's got a rhino in there the most dangerous animal alive it's murder 
The guy says, Wait, you promised to leave the rifle. Did I? Ha ha ha. Happy birthday, Miss Lane, and good night, all. You'll pay for this. This when Superman hears about it, Lois says. I swear, that's not a jaguar, that's a tiger. most ill-tempered of beasts and one of the most powerful the bewildered rhino shakes his head and charges he'll wreck the place kill us all and it's your fault beams clark's thinking i've got to get out and fast that window he's looking at the skylight i didn't mean to have things turn out this way he says Clark Kent, if you leave me here, I'll never speak to you again, Lois says. Sorry, Lois, but someone has to get help. Clark's out the window, out the skylight. Once outside, Clark changes in a twinkling to Superman and meets a jeering foeman. The joke's on you again, Superman, whether you know it or not. You're needed too badly inside to bother with me just now the prankster says look at him swirling his mustache laugh while you're able prankster you won't be away far away by the time i finish this little ch this little chore a split second later so clark kent wasn't kidding when he uh, went down the street yelling that a Mangry was loose in here. Superman, I was hoping you'd come. I thought you never would. That's Lois' silhouette saying that. I was hoping you'd come. I thought you never would. mountain of bone and muscle hurls towards the man of steel playful fellow isn't he careful superman i've seen them kill elephants Pow, punches them elephants did you say if there are any around bring them on Superman tosses the stunted animals into their cages and then, excuse me, but I have a date with a laughing hyena. Wait for me, Superman, Lois says. High above the city, Superman's telescopic eyes scan the streets until they spy. Prankster's car about to enter that garage. High time someone played a joke on him for a change moving with the speed of light the man of steel lifts the garage room garage from his foundation haha -ha. I could have sworn the garage was there but it isn't that's prankster in his car only Superman could do that I'd better get out of sight fast. Ah, oh, there's Superman thinking, got him worried now, but I'm not through yet. Away, oh, he isn't following me. If I can only get to, oof, he rams into the telephone pole. Not a soul in sight. I don't like this, the prankster thinks. It's like a nightmare, only I'm afraid it isn't one. The prankster is in trouble and he knows it. Fun, isn't it, prankster? Even if I have to repair the damage to property later, Superman says. I knew it was 
you all the time ha 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 you didn't fool me for a minute the prankster says superman posture is crazy in the meantime beam's guests have quieted down and lois finally unwraps her presence a compact from clark wasn't that sweet of him and then the guy who's throwing the party who likes lois i bought her pearls but she's more excited over a simple little gift from that reporter see oh there's a prank in there prankster's prank oh suddenly wonder what's inside poof ho 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 a trick compact everybody's laughing you don't need a powder puff it explodes in your face ha ha the police department gets a surprise package also mind if i hang up a bag of worn out tricks uh sergeant oh i'll be hanged if superman hasn't caught the prankster droll isn't it ha 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 he's still laughing the prankster obviously he's insane and clark is on hand to cover the story almost immediately i hear you've got prankster sergeant i'll make it'll make a great story for the daily planet if it's true i don't know how new how you newspaper lads find out things so fast kent but you can see for yourself who's hanging around look at the prankster he's still laughing <laughs> totally insane totally insane the next minute any word on superman's hunt for the prankster what you that's lois oh it looks like her face is face is red maybe that's the coloring she's mad as very mad never mind lois i've got the story and isn't there too much powder on your nose uh -huh. everybody's still laughing you've got a lot of nerve to speak to me after giving me that compact i should have should think you'd had enough of prank practical jokes ah superman doesn't know what's going on or clark kent doesn't pranksters laughing ha ah. ha I always manage to have the last laugh. Ha 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 ha. That's like the Joker in a weird way. It'll be your last laugh, all right, in public. But Lois, I don't understand. The end. Clark doesn't know what's going on. I wonder who came first. I'm pretty sure Joker was around before the prankster. Like, I don't know. I haven't looked into the the original the first appearance of the prankster and the first appearance of joker uh first appearance of joker happens in uh, detective comics but i believe it's in the 1930s uh, number wise and 40s so i'm pretty sure the joker appeared before 1945 if this is the first appearance of the prankster what's this guy this is a one-page story what is this Oh, this is just an advertisement. Volt, Volto from Mars. Volto, another cereal. Look at this. Volto from Mars. Volto's out of this world. Magnetic powers conquer a fiery inferno in the timberlands of the Great Northwest. Save Jimmy, and the save Jimmy and the Junior rangers from a tragic fate so a little story 
so joker was 1940 elder god looked it up for us in the live stream so joker was 1940 so the prankster this is 1945 so five years later but i don't know if this is the first appearance of the prankster say this is great think i'll take some up to mars <laughs> great nut flakes prankster was 1942 elder god is doing checks for us also so prankster came out two years after the joker great nut, nut flakes whole grain general foods again cool. there's a little bit of foxing i believe there's a little bit of foxing right there right the browning happening but not much and this is the center fold and the staples are really nicely in take a look i don't know if this is going to focus there you go right. the book is in really good condition great condition and there's a little text story here wow gang we're almost into two hours look at this what do we got left here we got another story of Lois Lane and this is we got two more stories still I think we're not gonna get a chance to read these look at the artwork in this pretty nice let's just flip through the rest of this and see so there's one more story which is like a how many page story one right and what's this story called girl reporter so this is a lois lane story girl reporter okay Nice artwork, clean, very clean. Right. Let's see if we can focus. And the color is really nice on this. Here's an advertisement for bite a honey, <laughs> bite a honey. <laughs> need a bit, of, need a bit of honey, bit of honey. I do. I want some honey. I don't, this is this is no longer around. I've never seen it anyway. Bit of honey, too bad. I would have bought this when I was a kid, when I ate garbage like this. Daffy and Doodle. Daffy and Doodle. What is this Daffy and Doodle? Let's read Daffy and Doodle. Daffy and Doodle. I don't know Daffy and Doodle gosh i'll have to shave again you're always crowing about your beard doodle suppose you had to shave 20 or 30 times a day like a man i know 20 or 30 times he says i'd have to see that first to believe it okay then follow me uh-huh there he is barber <laughs> <laughs> okay that's a funny joke that's a funny joke you that's a funny joke shave 20 to 30 times a day a barber does a barber does right and he gets punched for for smarty right funny people like to laugh all funny buying comic books screen comics I don't know screen comics screen comics leading comics buzzy and all funny comics cool the symbol of your guarantee of the best in comics so this is 
uh, DC as well, right? Because it's got the Superman publication, DC. Guarantee of the best in comics, as they say, right? Here's another advertisement for Wheaties. Right? Look at this one, Superman. Garage. The Rubbish Robbers. This story is The Rubbish Robbers. Okay. Rubbish Robbers. The, the Lois Lane story was written by Whitney Ellsworth and the pencils by Sam Citron and inks by Stan K. Okay. And this one, this script is supposed to be Jerry Siegel, possibly. Okay. The pencils by Ed Dubro Dubrotka and uh, the inks by Stan K again. And now there's a guy asking how many how many pages was this? I believe this was 52 pages. Uh, yeah, 52 page magazine. Right? From 1945. And look at all the like you seriously because he's mentioning that you did get your money's worth out of out of these comics in the golden age and you definitely did get your money's worth out of comics in the golden age right very cool so another story uh -huh. superman's doing a sketch of the guy Lots of dialogue, lots of sketchy people, like mobsters and gangsters in there. Look at that, sketchy as hell. <laughs> All right? Look at that. And they're in behind bars. Superman grabs the bad guys, and they're blaming each other. You had to go mess with Superman. I knew we'd wind up here. I knew it, he says. Ah, oh, shut up. I was doing fine in the laundry racket until you swiped that map and got me into all this. From now on, our partnership is dissolved. Right. The Thumb McCann. What is this? Rescued the doomed liner. Bazooka Joes. Bazooka Joes. What is this? These are shoes, I guess. Are they shoes? With his magic bazooka, sh bazooka shoes. So it's a shoe advertisement. Right? Shoes can make you a hero too. Look at him go. Vroom. <laughs> if only you could buy shoes like that. Thumb McCann. McCann. Boys, make sure your shoes are Thumb McCann's. I don't think this brand is around anymore. Scuffy. Scuffy the Tramp. Let's read this little guy too. Scuffy the Tramp. What does this say? Yo, what the? This is the last straw. What's going on? Oh, he was sleeping in the hay, in the straw pile, and he's uh, what is that? Raking hay. Boop. Poked him. I can't sleep anywhere without being disturbed. The drunkard said I think I'll just pretend to toss this rack through that window hey 
Oh, he's he's doing what we read, remember? In EC Comics. When we were reading, was it EC Comics we were reading? Where the guy was trying to get arrested so he could get a good night's where he could get a meal, Christmas meal. But this guy was just pretending and he gets arrested, thrown in jail, and he's sleeping soundly. Cutting cutting a log. Cool. Cool. Super Men of America. Secret message. Oh, you gotta decipher the secret meshes. Okay, you code breakers. You can have a snapshot of this and decipher the secret meshes message, whatever that says. Superman's secret message. Code code Saturn number five. Okay. And send it here. Go back in time and send it here. Superman, CEO, care of Action Comics. Dear Superman, please and please enroll me in a member of the Superman of America, Superman of America. I enclose ten cents to cover cost of mailing. It is understood that I am to receive my membership certificate, emblem, and Superman code. Cool. And there's a little bit of you know holes in the thing here that come out through the i guess it was a sort of a scratch because there's marks on this side too so rubbed against something so that would affect the grade as well but yeah i would say this is this is a five right at least a five i was so because it's in really good condition like intact nothing's loose so that's superman number 37 apologies about not getting to read the last two stories but you get your money's worth in the golden age of comics with a 52 page magazine and now we know superman comics book published bi-monthly i don't know why i didn't uh, know that or i didn't remember that so superman comics published bi-monthly right so magazine format really okay aside from that uh we'll be back we got more comics to read uh in a future live stream for now I'm gonna go back to the last stream turn on the chat turn on the cameras and ah uh, just see how people enjoyed this let's turn these guys on 